Okay. Now we're looking at the distinction between a person of interest versus a wanted person. Okay, our grade. In today's video, we're going to look at the difference between a wanted person and a person of interest. Because in recent times, through the media, I realized that the general public mix both terms up. So after watching this video, you will no longer be in the dark. I will now play a clip, after which I'll add my comments at the end. I want to start off first by saying though that we have a legal principle that speaks of a wanted person or a person of interest. Now the two that you really hear the most is the two that you spoke about. Wanted person, person, person of, of interest. interest. A wanted person means that there is enough evidence from our end to say that this person can be charged and placed before the court for this offence. Oh, so right. would have been using our, our social media sites, our website, would have been pushing out the information, asking these persons to come in. Now a person of interest, on the other hand, is somebody who could be a, a victim, could be a complainant, could be somebody who has information that we need to get. And I don't want to get technical, but there's this term that we use called a judge rule that says that once an offence has been committed, then we can ask anybody who we believe have information to assist the, the investigation. So if as even an employer or mm -hmm. a relative I see that, yes. or just a friend, I see someone I know on a person of interest list, mm -hmm. it's not that they have done something wrong, no, no. but the police would like to speak to them. Yes. It could be though that they would have done something wrong, but not in all the cases, because it could also be that they were a victim, they saw something, they have information that we want. But when mm -hmm. you hear that this person is on a wanted list, there's sufficient evidence to say this person has committed this offence, we need to do a question and answer to see if it's a, there's a possible charge that can be laid. So mm -hmm. again, we're saying to persons, you know, if it's your relative, your friend, you believe that you're honestly helping a situation, but you're not, you're making it worse. And you're also compounding by putting yourself um, in conflict with the law because we're, we, will, we have no other recourse but to arrest. So again, we're saying, know the laws of Jamaica. If I could add to the DSP remarks, in order for the police to classify that person as wanted, a warrant must be prepared whether by the court or a warrant and information, which is usually signed by a justice of the peace, saying the police have enough information to charge a person, usually after a question and answer is conducted. In other words, if the police classify as a wanted person, they have enough evidence to charge you. On the other hand, if the police classify you as a person of interest, this don't necessarily mean that you commit a crime. You may witness a crime, a victim of a crime, or the police believe you have information that can help them solve a crime. However, it can also mean you are suspected of committed a crime, but the police just don't have enough evidence to classify you as a wanted person. Who remember when Silk Boss was seen on video getting beaten and the police classify him as a person of interest? So in that case, he's a victim and the police classify him as a person of interest. Now in the Anika Townsend case, the youth named Russian Barnett, the police classify him as a person of interest. However, he's a suspect, but they may not have enough information for the list him as wanted. So as you can see, it can use in both ways. So it's just a wider term the police use when they're conducting an investigation in a matter. If you are now clear on the topic, please leave a comment in the comment section. And if you like this content, please remember to subscribe to the channel. And see you in the next video.